Greetings, St. Barnabas members and friends. So I come to you with another daily meditation reflecting on the Lord's Prayer. And I've titled this one, Does God Lead Us Into Temptation? Part 3. And in previous reflections, I've uh, given a, a kind of a broader understanding of how I think God leads us into temptation and how I think God does not. So let me just carry on with part three now. And, and in part three, what I want to talk about is the third theme of how it is that God leads us into temptation. And, and in the main, I, I understand this to be that God sends the disciples into the most difficult of times in which they will feel tempted, in which it will be a trial and a tribulation. But God needs them to be the light going into the darkness, to be a presence of peace in the midst of turmoil. And so I've, I've several times I've commented that I understand the whole Sermon on the Mount to to be, oh, a kind of unpacking of the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer living in the, in, really in the very middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and then the Beatitudes that begin the Sermon on the Mount, that the Lord's Prayer and the Beatitudes mirror one another with regard to being a roadmap for the spiritual journey. And so, to get at this, I want to actually use the Beatitudes. And I want to paraphrase them to keep it... Um, uh, oh, not exactly simple, but uh, easy, easy to grasp and move through quickly. So, so the Beatitudes begin with humility. And then next is the ability to let go of one's over-attachment to one's life and cultural identification. And then comes strength under control or strength that is able to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And then the pursuit or the hunger for God as the motivation for all of one's life. And then the realization of the desperate need for mercy. And as we enter into that, to begin to experience that mercy begets mercy. And as we live into that, it prepares us to see God, to see God all around us in everything and everyone, and especially in our enemies. And that matures into those who are the peacemakers. And the peacemakers are called the children of God. And that matures into those who are able to stand fast in their faith and in their relationship with their God and their love for God, to stand fast in the midst of all manner of trial and tribulation and temptation, to stand fast and not be moved. So, so that's the end of the Beatitudes. And then Jesus makes another of his startling wisdom sayings when he says, you are the light of the world. Now, first time I read that and thought about it, I mean, immediately I found myself saying, Jesus, you are the light of the world. How is it that you would say that I am the light of the world? And, and going back to the Beatitudes, those that have traversed the spiritual journey, become the peacemakers, the children of God, those are the ones that Jesus sends into the world to be the light of the world. And all manner of trial and tribulation or temptation comes all through that journey chronicled in the Beatitudes to prepare us to refine us, to purify us, such that when we are sent into the world, and whatever that might be, whatever situation or circumstance that might be, what radiates out of us is light, life, and love. And so, especially now, especially at this time in our nation and at this time in our church, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in the midst of what our presiding bishop has called a spiritual pandemic. And if I may say it this way, a spiritual pandemic of the chaos of race relations in our nation and in the church. 
when was there a time when Jesus needed more disciples that could enter into those circumstances and be light, life, and love? Be what Jesus also calls the salt of the earth. When was there a time when that was more needed? And so, the circumstances that we're in, they work in two ways. They refine us, they tempt us, they try us, and they invite us to look in the mirror, to pick up the other themes of God leading us into temptation. They strengthen our faith and our hope and our love. They invite us to look at our attachment to our cultural conditioning and to let go of that. And then they invite us to be willing to be sent, to be sent as what Bishop Curry calls selflessness, reminding us in his theme on the way of love that the opposite of love is not hatred. The opposite of love is selfishness. And so, so the maturation of the disciple is a selfless life that is willing to be sent into the world and, and willing to stand up in the presence of all manner of insult and trial and persecution and stand fast. Stand fast in the storm as a presence of light, life, and love. So, let us, let us embrace the journey and be willing to be sent. More to come. Peace to you.